What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. We are back at it here with the season preview episode for the Pittsburgh Penguins and man oh man I am excited for this one. If you are new to the channel hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content and game one is today. As I record this it's actually tomorrow but the way you guys are seeing this it is today going up against the New York Rangers should be a fun matchup gonna be exciting to watch that one but we've got to get into it guys the opening night roster it was a long pretty positive preseason as a whole there were a couple of injuries here and there that we will get to for the Penguins but things are looking good heading into this regular season I'm not gonna lie I'm definitely excited to see what the core old guard has to bring with Crosby, Malkin, and Latang coming to the team. And they have announced the opening night roster. Uh, and this is bearing some injuries as well, as you can see here uh, down below. Additionally, goaltender Alex, Alex Nedeljkovic is week to week after sustaining a lower body injury in the preseason game in Detroit October 1st. Forward Blake Lazat is out with a concussion after getting hit in the face with a puck in the Hockeyville game on September 29th. Forward Matt Nieto has been placed on long-term IR, which is quite a bummer because I've been waiting to see him really fully play for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And then uh, Panam Rev, I believe that's how you say his name, has been designated to uh, the injured non-roster lineup. Uh, one thing that they didn't mention there, and if we go over here to Puckpedia on the transactions, uh, Brian Rust also put on injured reserve. Uh, now, when you see the injuries over here, according to Puckpedia, he is expected to return October 14th. Um, the same with Nedeljkovic and Lazat. Um, so that is intriguing. I know Carlson will be good to go for game number one. Let me also pop open the Penguins schedule here as we look at it for the regular season. If they are back the 14th, that means they are going to be back for game number three against the Montreal Canadiens away from home. I feel like the Penguins every year have an early season game in Montreal, and it's usually a very good performance. Uh, but we're obviously worried about this week one. I am also going to the Toronto area, not for the Toronto Maple Leafs game this upcoming weekend, but for a wedding. So wedding is a little bit uh, in the afternoon, so can't actually make it to downtown Toronto to actually watch the game. But I will be up there to see how things go in and around the GTA area. So if you guys are looking forward to that game, hit that thumbs up. But it's a big first week, uh, big first month, obviously, uh, for the schedule. We're going to take a look at the schedule here in a little bit. I do want to take a look at the projected opening night lines. You've got O'Connor, Crosby, and Bolivier on that first line. I kind of wish they put Rucker McGrory up there with Crosby or even Cody Glass up there Crosby just to see what one of those two guys could do with him but I think Bolivier it's very intriguing to see what he will be able to do up there I feel like we might be able to get a Chris Kunitz or Pascal Dupuy type player out of him we'll have to wait and see how that goes I think O'Connor is more of that water bug fast as lightning can throw the body around after a few years here in the league he's definitely proven that he's not super duper skilled but if he needs to put his nose in the corners to retrieve the puck I think this is the year that uh, might be a nice little breakout year. Anyone who plays with Crosby is going to get some solid points. Uh, but I think once Rust is back, he'll slot into that O'Connor uh, spot and leave Bolivier up there. Or honestly, it might depend on who does better with Crosby in the first couple of games before Rust comes back. And then it might take a couple of games for Rust to get back up and running. Again, they're saying he will be back the 14th. Um, I'm assuming he most likely will be back the 16th or 18th and those are two home games that way he's not coming back on the road unless they want him to so it might take him uh the sabers carolina winnipeg they got the western canadian swing here early in the season that's a very good team bonding uh activity and if they can at least go three and one or even two and two on that swing that would be absolutely huge but Brian Rust getting back into the fold will be key for that first line and productivity for Sidney Crosby, unless the O'Connor-Bolivier connection does play a key role uh, in early 
season success here for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Looking at their second line, Raquel, Bunting, and Malkin. I think Bunting will work really well on that second line with Malkin. I know Malkin, honestly, he looked pretty solid in some of the games that I saw him play in the preseason. I'll be intrigued to see if he can have a better performance this year than he did last year in terms of consistent performance and not kind of having one or two good games and then off basically for 10, another one or two good games off for a little bit. He seems to have had that issue the past couple of years. Hopefully it is fixed this year. And I think a big X factor player and a big question mark is Raquel. Can he really step up and be that player that the Penguins had originally traded for? He is a very solid uh, chunk of change when it comes to a contract, uh, 5 million for the next four seasons. That's a big hit on the Penguins. And if he's not producing up to that mark, what's it even worth keeping him around the team for? Maybe they look to shop him if he does not perform well or gets a little bit of the injury bug, but I, I expect a nice performance this year. If he can get at least 55 points this year, I think the sky's the limit for him in terms of uh, what he can fully produce. I don't know. Let's take a look at stats here. Last year, total points, only 37 points last year in 70 games played, 15 goals, 22 assists. Not the best of seasons. His first full season in Pittsburgh, he did put up 60 points. So if we can get that Raquel back, I think that'd be huge, even if we could maybe get a little bit better. But I think 55 to 65 points is, is where we're looking for Raquel to have a fairly solid bounce back season, in my opinion. Uh, taking a look here at the third line, I think obviously we're all intrigued in McGroarty. We're all intrigued about McGroarty and what he can bring to the table with Eller and Pugliavari. Uh, come into the lineup. I'm honestly surprised with the preseason that he uh, he gave us because uh, I honestly think him and Pustinen were fighting for that third, fourth line position spot. Uh, I'll be really intrigued to see what Pulvari can do ever since coming over from, uh, obviously he went from Edmonton to Carolina, then Carolina to the Penguins and kind of bounced back and forth last year of playing, not playing, uh, and getting him back into the swing of things. So if we could maybe get like a nice solid 35, 40 point season out of Pulivari, and if he can bring another part of his uh, game that he maybe hasn't shown before of that grit, his big body, solid speed, a little clunky with the hands, not the um, a smoothest of hands, but he can uh, he's serviceable, I should say, uh, in terms of a goal scoring ability in the regular season. Uh, if we can get a little bit more out of him and then McGordy, can he perform to the expectations that the Penguins think he can since bringing him in, trading the Jaeger for him, a one for one prospect swap. They wanted a player who can come in now has a little bit of grit, has some very solid vision, can put the puck in the back of the net. I don't know if third line time is going to be able to help him produce and, um, become a solid asset for the Penguins in the starting lineup. Hopefully he can stay healthy enough to be able to develop playing the NHL game. He's not going against top two lines, so playing on that third line might give him a more, op more opportunity to be able to develop into a role that the Penguins want. And maybe if there are injuries higher up in the lineup, he gets a little bit of a bump playing with Malkin or Crosby and uh, is able to flourish that way as well. Fourth line, I'm really intrigued about Hayes, Glass, and Achari. That's kind of a nice little salt and pepper line. I'm quite shocked that Hayes isn't a third line player, but obviously Eller, they, they feel as if Eller maybe had a better training camp. First year for Hayes, I don't expect a big year. If he could maybe crack 25, 30 points, I'd be happy, I guess. Not uh, ecstatic or excited about him, but... Um, in terms of past players coming in first seasons with the Penguins haven't been great. You can look at Carlson last year, not anywhere close to what the expectations were for him coming in. I know they had power play issues last season. Things looked a little bit better in the preseason when the, a, a lot of the starters were in there. So that's a good sign for the future. But I'm intrigued to see what Glass can do. Can we get a full season out of Achari? Can he stay healthy throughout the year? And what type of performer can we get out of Kevin Hayes? I know when he was with the Philadelphia Flyers, he was an absolute killer when he would play the Penguins and anyone else in the Metropolitan Division. So I'm really intrigued to see what he can bring in. Pustinen, they are saying, is the first scratch forward. I thought he looked great last year for the Penguins, especially near the end of the season and when they made that push. So if he can maybe crack the lineup, let's say if Pulivari isn't playing well, or Glass, or Achari, or Raquel. Slide Pustinen in there. He looked great last year. Looked somewhat solid here in the preseason, but 
I say they should probably get him a little bit more playing time. I am a little intrigued here with the defensive lineup here that they're showing. They've got Grizzlick and Latang. They're breaking up the Latang Graves pairing, which I am thrilled about. I'm honestly shocked that they still have Graves around. I'm not a big fan of Graves, but when you look at his contract, it is kind of hard to move that contract four more years at $4.5 million has not lived up to the expectations so far. Hopefully this season he can prove us wrong. That would be awesome. But he is going to be playing with uh, Jack St. Ivany. Made the team Riley Shea is the backup uh, scratched defender. Um, <sighs> am I crazy about the Penguins' defensive depth? They've got Pedersen, Carlson. Uh, together, the two Swedes, I'm really intrigued to see what Pedersen can do this year considering it is a contract year as well as Grizzlick. Uh, we'll see if Pedersen is able to earn himself another contract or maybe he plays himself into a bigger contract going into the offseason next year and testing the free agent market if the Penguins aren't willing to give him any more money. Um, Grizzlick with Latang, I think having a little bit more defensive stability with Grizzlick with Latang, I think is a great idea. I like Grizzlick's game. He was always great for the Bruins when he was healthy. If he can come and bring that in to the Penguins system and how they're going to be playing, I'm really excited to see what he can do. Chris Letang, if he can just stay healthy, keep that solid offensive game going and be a little bit more shored up in the defensive zone. Him and Carlson. Carlson a couple times, more than a couple times, a bunch of times last year. He just had that what the heck is he doing moments with the puck and, and doing maybe trying to do a little bit too much and, and cause turnovers, goals against. It, 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 was, it was hard to watch at times, but then he had times where, man, this is the Carlson of old, the Norris Trophy winning <coughs> Carlson. Shots from the point, the vision, the passing, the great plays defensively. He had moments up and down. Hopefully, season two in Pittsburgh, he's a little bit more acclimated to the area, a little bit more acclimated to the team. I know he didn't play any preseason games whatsoever, so it may take him a little bit to get things going. Maybe that helps him. Maybe it doesn't. We'll have to wait and see. Time will tell and give us an answer on that here early in the season. Uh, and then Graves. He has to have a good bounce back here. I think St. Ivany... Uh, and Shea are, are, are a lot like um, Chad Ruedel, just plug and play, sixth defenseman, find, see who's playing hot, who's not, put them into the lineup, see what see what can stick. I know they've got some young defensemen in the up and coming um, uh, ways with uh, Pickering. I know he's an exciting prospect. I don't think he's quite ready. They traded away P.O. Joseph, or I, I, I think they didn't re-sign him. I, I I always forget what happened with him, but he's with the St. Louis Blues now with his brother. So they don't really have that uh, crazy good depth that they've had in the past when it comes to their bottom six defense, but they haven't really been the best anyway. So we'll have to wait and see. And then the goaltending with Nedeljkovic out, Blomquist gets the call up and is the backup. I honestly don't think he'll play a lot of games. Uh, if I'm looking at their schedule right now, maybe he plays the game in Detroit to allow Yari or Jari, I always forget how to say his last name, to play the Rangers and then the Leafs and then uh, maybe come back and throw him in. So maybe Boomquist gets uh, two games. Maybe he gets the two away games or maybe he gets Detroit uh, and uh, Buffalo. We'll have to wait and see how things go, how they want that uh, rotation to go as Nedeljkovic is out. And again, according to Puckpedia, it does have Nedeljkovic expected return being the 14th. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Lower body injury. I don't know if it's groin, a knee, whatever it might be. Let's hope he's back soon because he had a great run near the end of the season last year as well. But man, I'm excited to see how things go uh, for the Penguins. Top six, bottom six. Uh, I know they, they're saying a lot of things about the bottom six and how they feel like uh, it's a, basically another year under their belt. A couple of new guys, a couple of young guys, see what they can do. I think Pustin and McGrory will have big impacts this season. I'm really expecting Crosby to, to continue his, his run of form when we look at him last year. Total points. He had 94 points in 82 games played. He is one more season away from setting the all-time record for most consecutive point-per-game seasons, breaking Wayne Gretzky's record. I think he'll be able to do that this year, even if he does pick up a little bit of a knock. The last two seasons, he's played 82 games each season. Before that, it was 60, 55, 41, 79. So he's, uh, I think he's due for another solid season. I hope he can maybe crack the 45 
uh, 50 mark. If he can put up 100 points, that would be absolutely amazing. I expect a big year out of Crosby off of that fresh new 8 seven million dollar two-year extension so we've got a total of three seasons i think left of Sidney crosby to enjoy with the pittsburgh penguins evgeny malkin obviously we want to see him have a nice solid season last year <sighs> wasn't great uh wasn't great 67 points 27 goals 40 assists compared to the season before which i still thought was pretty subpar 27 goals 56 assists for 83 points uh and then you can see there 42 points, 28 points, 74 points, 72 points. His last big season was 17-18 with 98 points. If we can get a season like two years ago, if he could put up 80, 85 to 90 points, I think that's a solid season for Malkin. If he can cut down on the penalty minutes as well, maybe be more around that 50 50 to 60 range as opposed to, to 70, 80 range. I think uh, that, that'll be solid. The more times we're out of the box and we'll have to wait and see what the power play is going to do this year. Who's going to be on that main power play? How are things going to shake up? I'm really intrigued to see if they are able to turn it around. Um, obviously with the new coach, uh, assistant coach coming in, Dave Quinn coming over from San Jose was the former New York Rangers head coach knew how to work things. His power play has been great in the past. And uh, I'm really intrigued to see what he can do with the Penguins. Um, honestly, a big breakout year. I'm really looking forward to Ricard Raquel. Hopefully he can have a breakout year. I think Michael Bunting, if he can have a solid season like he did with the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, that first year, that would be awesome. 63 points versus 49 his second year uh, with the Leafs. So if he can get 50 points, I think 50 on the nose, um, would be absolutely amazing uh, in my mind. I think that would be a massive boost to that second line, especially if Raquel can put up 50 to 60, 65 points. Malkin putting up anywhere from 70 to 85 points. Crosby, 90, uh, hopefully 95 points. And then on that first line, I think Rust needs to have a solid season. I know he'll be coming off of injury, um, but with his contract and the way it is right now, last year was not good enough. I know he played 62 games. 56 total points. That's pretty solid. Uh, and the year before that, he only had 46 points in 81 games played. If he can get back to, I mean, 56 points in 62 games played, it, it, looking at the stats is probably one of his best years uh, he's ever had. So if he can stay healthy all year long and maybe put up that like 75, 80 point mark and be that next Chris Kunitz, that next... 2A guy that plays with Crosby. I think the Penguins are in for a good season. And then on the back end, I know we could talk about their bottom six depth and having a little bit more grit, but I think with Lazat, Achari, if he could stay healthy, uh, I think if Rucker McGordy can come in and make an impact on a entry level contract, and then if Anthony Bolivier can have a solid year coming over. I know when we look at him, and I can talk about the whole team, but when you, when you look at him, the last couple of years haven't been great ever since leaving the Islanders. Um, and he really only had one or two solid good years with the Islanders. And he's always uh, 39 points, most points, and that was back in 2019, 2020. So is he way past his prime? I don't know. If we can at least get 35 points out of him, I think that's huge. If he's playing with Crosby, he could get 40 points. You just never know. Crosby can elevate players in their game because guys just want to do that much better playing with him, and they want to stay playing with him, so they have to perform at a top-notch level night in and night out. On the back end, can we get a little bit more from Carlson? Can we keep a little bit better defensive mindset between him and Latang being a little bit more responsible defensively. Again, 56 points last year, the year before 101 points on the San Jose Sharks. Absolutely crazy stuff. But then he had 35, 22, 40. Uh, I mean, ever since leaving Ottawa, he hasn't had a great season except that Norse trophy winning year with 101. I believe he won the Norse that year. I could be wrong. But can we even get ha uh, three quarters of that? Give us 85 points. You can get 85 points out of Carlson and then out of Latang if you're able to get, so let's take a look. Last year, he had 51 points, 41 points, 68, 45, 44. If we can get 50 points again out of Latang and be a little bit better defensively, uh, keep the plus minus stats in the positive. Uh, playing with a new defensive partner in Grizzlick. 
Um, I think this guy's a little bit, a little bit smaller of a guy, but is a, a big solid body. Not crazy high with the points, but he's a very solid defensive player. I think that's a better move than having um, Latang playing with Graves. Can Graves have a big season? And then I think the biggest thing with the Penguins and really any team in general is getting good goaltending play. Can Tristan, Yari, Jari, whatever you want to call him. I know people call him multiple things. Can he have a solid year with the Penguins? Can he step up? Last year, 2.91 with a 903 save percentage. It's okay. We need that save percentage to be like the 21-22 season. A 919. I believe that was his all-star appearance year as well. Um, and then even back 1920, a 921. So if we can get those, and I know a lot of that also has to do with defense, but I know his high glove side, short side has been a weakness the past couple of years. Can he shore that up? Can we get better defense out of the Pittsburgh Penguins? And then looking at their schedule here the first month. Uh, I mean, you got the Western Canadian swing. Again, we need to go at least two and two there. Uh, we've got a total of three, six, nine, 12 games in this month of October. If we can go nine and three, I think that's a pretty solid opening month. If they go six and six, I wouldn't press the panic button or anything like that um i would say if they go three and nine maybe panic button um could be hit four and eight and not great um even five and seven not great i think anything above six and six is a solid month with some injuries to the lineup depending on one guys come in and out uh, i think best and most realistic case in my mind for the pittsburgh penguins uh, I would love to see a seven and five or eight and four. I think that would be a solid month for the Penguins. Um, realistically, you might throw a shootout loss or win in there, um, uh, overtime loss in there as well. So uh, overall, if you can go six and six, seven, seven and five, eight and four uh, in this month, best case scenario, I think would be nine and three one way or another, however you cut it, or maybe uh, eight, three and one or so on and so forth. If there's a shootout loss in there, I think Rangers, it's going to be a tough game, but I think having Quinn on the bench and knowing a little bit about the Rangers can give the Penguins a little bit more of a leg up. Um, I think a win there, uh, possibly a win against Detroit, but I think a loss there, win against Toronto. I think a win against Montreal, win against Buffalo. They looked pretty brutal against the Devils. Could be a tight game against Carolina at home. I'll give that to Carolina. Uh, possibly, I would say loss to the Jets, win against uh, Flames, loss to the Oilers, win against the Canucks, uh, win against Minnesota, and then I think a sneaky loss to the Ducks. Um, for some reason, I just have that sneaking suspicion, but it's going to be fun to watch. I hope you guys are ready to watch this season opener here against the Rangers tonight. Again, I'll put up their projected lineup for you guys as we close out this video. But if you guys enjoyed this, hit that thumbs up. I want to see some comments down below. What do you guys think for this upcoming season? Who is your X factor? What are you looking forward to the most this upcoming season? As well as hockey's back baby really excited to get things underway here with you guys we'll try to recap every game i know this week is going to be a little difficult i'm going to canada starting actually as this video is out i'll probably be on the road as we speak getting up to canada and we'll be back home on the 13th to be able to do a recap of these three games for you guys so typically i'll try to do the recap uh the next day uh of the game for you guys so if the, the, for instance, Buffalo recap will be on the 17th as well as previewing the next game. And we'll try to keep that uh, the way we do our videos. Uh, but the, the first three games, we'll have to do a mega recap of week one as a whole, as I will be driving back from Canada, about a 10 hour drive uh, back from a wedding. But uh, that's going to be it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. But again, that's it for this one. And as always, stay dusty.